what's up YouTube? Last November I made a video about my current EDC backpack system and shortly after that I actually bought a new backpack but this one is not meant to be my EDC backpack but rather my camera backpack and it is this guy so if you're interested in seeing what I actually carry inside this backpack don't go away. By the way if you don't care about the backpack at all but only want to see my camera gear and all the good stuff I have in here feel free to use the timestamps in the description down below. So anyway let's get into it. So, before we get into the contents of this backpack, let's take a quick look at the backpack itself. If you know me, you know that I like old school materials, but mixed in with modern craftsmanship and design elements. That's why I love nutsack bags so much, and also why I decided to give this camera backpack a go. This backpack is called The Little Backpack by the company Companion. Just by the name you know that this is a smaller version of their other backpack, which is called The Backpack 2.0. But I went specifically for this one because I knew that if I bought the bigger one I would fill it up for sure and break my back on the next trip. Anyway, Companion is a German manufacturer of high quality camera gear. They produce all of their stuff in the EU and their headquarter is located just about an hour from where I live. So I had the chance to collect my order in person which was great. Also just so you know, I bought this with my own money. Companion gear is quite expensive so I gladly took the chance to use a Black Friday coupon code back in November. But still, it was my own money. Companion doesn't know about this channel or about the fact that I'm making this video. Back to the backpack though. It's a small camera backpack made out of wax canvas and leather. Everything here feels high quality. For the wax canvas, they apparently used some dark sorcery, because while it sure is wax canvas, they managed to make it feel not damp. If you ever touched a barber jacket or something like that, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. This one however feels completely neutral. The material itself though is still highly water repellent, but not waterproof. Overall, this backpack does put form and aesthetics over function. If you want a backpack that is no nonsense straight performance and functionality with only the newest materials, Companions also got you covered with their Element backpack. I have never tried that one though, so I have no idea if it's good or not. I can only say that I have experience with the X-Pack fabric they used on the Element backpack, because it's the same stuff that Able Carry uses on their daily backpack, and that is indeed a very water repellent and rough use material. But anyway, back to this guy. As I said, this is form over function, so while you do get a fully opening and full leather backside, there are no extension pockets on the side and more importantly, no side access into this backpack. I think that this is a huge weak spot of this backpack. And again, I get why they did it, it just looks better this way. Without any side access doors, ruining the minimalistic lines. But seriously, this is a camera backpack. Quick access is just a must in my opinion. And there are ways to implement such a feature without ruining the aesthetics. Same with the side pockets for water bottles and tripods. But other than that, I really love it. With the backpack you get a metric ton of high quality dividers with industrial strength velcro, whatever that means. There are small flat pockets on both sides for cables, passports and stuff like that, as well as another flat pocket on front and two straps with aluminium buckles on both sides and under the leather bottom. So if you want to take your tripod with you, they got you covered. Lastly, there is a big roll top opening. You can actually also take out or lower the bottom, so you can get more space in there. But obviously that would take away from the space inside the camera compartment, so I haven't actually done that. Might be a useful feature though. As it is, the top compartment is still easily big enough for a set of travel backgammon, a GoPro chest mount and a light rain jacket. The top closes magnetically, which is nice, and you get the sick Cobra bucket to close the top off. Now though, the stuff you actually came here for. Open up the back side and you reveal the contents of what I carry. I do obviously change this up depending on what I'm doing, but this is what I usually have with me. Starting on the top left, there's my trusty Fuji 50-200mm telephoto lens. This is their compact telephoto lens, but I rarely ever use a tele anyway, mostly just for b-roll, so this is good enough for me. The stabilization works great for photos and video, and even though this is not rated as weather resistant, I never had any issues in light rain. Next to that, I keep my travel and vlogging camera, the Sony ZV-1. Well, this is actually the Sony RX100 Mark I, because I'm using the ZV-1 to film this, but you get the idea. The ZV-1 is a very capable little camera 
that does a lot of things well, but it's not perfect. I have a full review of it coming up though, so I'll save my final verdict for that video. The next item here is my main workhorse here, if you will, the Fuji X-T30. I bought the X-T30 back in September of 2019, and it's my main camera for the videos I make on this channel. Other than the addition of IBIS, this camera is all I need. Sure, I have thought about upgrading to the X-T4 or going full frame altogether every now and then, but if I'm honest, there is so much more potential in this camera that I'm not utilizing right now, that it would just be a waste of money. Also, me personally, I really like the form factor. I used to be that guy that stuck a goddamn battery grip on this Canon 70D just to make it look more professional. But now, I really just want to get the shots and having a camera that offers amazing image quality in such a small form factor is key for me. If the camera gets in the way, I leave it at home, so I get no shots. But anyway, I might upgrade this at some point, maybe if the X-H2 offers some worthwhile advantages, but until then, I'm having a blast with this tiny beast. The main lens I use for the vast majority of my shots is the 10-24. It's an f4, so it's certainly not the fastest lens on the planet, and I dropped it hard, and I think some of the glass elements inside are actually shattered. But anyway, it still works like a charm. Stabilization is great, nothing to complain about. I do however wish that Fuji would offer something a little faster other than that ridiculously huge and expensive 8-16mm f2.8, because that kind of ruins the point of having a capable APS-C camera. But anyway, I digress. My second favorite lens right now is something I acquired very recently. It's the Viltrox 56mm f1.4. I love the fact that there is finally third party glass available for the Fuji system and this 56mm lens is everything I could ask for at least in its price range. No complaints, would recommend. If you would like to get more info on this lens, I have another review in the pipeline waiting to be released. Now to the fun part, my Fuji X100V. Regular viewers of this channel are probably sick to death of seeing it by now, but this is, without any shadow of a doubt, the best thing I bought in 2020. Is it perfect? No, but it's close. If you want to see more about it, I got a couple of videos dedicated to the X100V already. In the slot next to the V, I keep a video microphone and a Rode SmartLav plus a lightning adapter, but sometimes I ditch the microphones and throw my WCL and TCL adapters for the X100V in there. Down in the middle, I keep the little tripod that came in a set with the Sony ZV-1. It's nothing to write home about, but it works good enough for what it is and it barely takes up any space. Up on top, I keep my filter pouch. I got three 49mm filters in there most of the time. Most notably a polarizer and a black promised quarter stop filter. Both fit the X100V. Also, I throw a pack of tissues in there and of course some booze. Nah, just kidding, this is just water, but since the backpack doesn't have a water bottle pocket on the outside, I just pack the small and flat flask by Stanley to have at least some water on me at all times. Down on the bottom I keep my DJI Osmo Action. Great little action cam with a selfie screen. Also, I keep a little tripod and hot shoe mount slash adapter down there. The last item in here is my Maxpedition skinny pouch. This pouch is a survival kit in and of itself. There is way too much stuff in here to go through in this video, but a lot of thought has went into it. So if you are interested, check out the video I made about it a while ago, linked in the description below. With the inside of the back panel, you get a laptop pouch that fits a small notebook up to 13 inches. But I just keep my 11 inch iPad Pro in there. I have recently started editing a few of my videos in LumaFusion on the iPad and I was absolutely blown away by how capable LumaFusion is and how smooth it ran. It's buttery without any hiccups and by far beyond the editing performance of my 2018 15 inch MacBook Pro. The iPad is still not a full laptop replacement for me, but still more than enough for on the go editing. On the outside of that pouch, you get some velcro pads that come with the backpack. There is one for SD cards that I don't use at all, a small one in which I keep my spare batteries, two for the ZV-1 and two for both the X-T30 and the X-100V. In the longer pouch on the bottom, I keep a RAV Power SSD with half a terabyte of storage for fast on the go editing and file transfer, along with a USB Type-C to USB Type-C cable with an integrated lightning adapter. And, most importantly, 
this neat little USB Type-C dongle made by Anker that allows me to get all the ports I want and need for my iPad Pro while still being able to charge it. Anyway, that's been it. Thank you so much for watching. If camera backpacks aren't your thing and you prefer to carry your stuff in something smaller like a satchel bag, I actually got you covered as well because I also very recently purchased this guy which is the Bowery bag by Ona. So if you want to see how I set this guy up for a kind of minimalist camera bag, feel free to subscribe and I'll be showing this one off pretty soon. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one. Take care.